So, Gregory, how is everything going with your plan to, um... Oh, what is it exactly? Waste his life. Ah, that's it. <laughs> I can't believe you'd make such a big deal of inviting us over for dinner and give me nothing but grief. Oh, I just wanted to give you grief. Your mother insisted on serving a meal. <laughs> Greg is not wasting his life. He is on a path to spiritual enlightenment, and I think we should all support him. Fine. There you go. Thank you. Oh, 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 Sorry. oh. Sorry. You dare you need another napkin? Or do you just want to use your Harvard diploma? <laughs> We're family. You don't need to break out the fancy stuff. You know what? I don't need to sit here and take this. Gregory, Gregory, I am sorry. I am sorry. It's just that... That I worry about you. I know how difficult it will be for you to have parents that other people look down on. <laughs> See, honey, it is about you. <laughs> it's just that you haven't worked in months. People are starting to talk. I tried to cover for you. Told everyone you were at Betty Ford. <laughs> then uh, Bunny Stanton comes back from Betty Ford and makes a complete fool out of me. <laughs> to Bunny. You're here. <laughs> Listen, you guys, Greg is going to figure out what he wants to do. It's just going to take some time. And you're comfortable with bringing home the bacon uh, or whatever it is you people eat? <laughs> That's what you do for someone you love, Edward. I'm sure if you want to take some time off and find another path, Kitty would go out and get a job. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Hail now, Edward. Turn into the skin. Kitty goes to work. Hello, I'm Kitty Montgomery. I'm here to work! You're so narrow-minded. God, get off the treadmill for a couple of months and suddenly I'm wasting my life. Greg, you can't let your parents get in your head. You're right. You're right. Thank you. You're welcome. Damn it, Dharma, I'm wasting my life! <laughs> Kitty, Edward, get out of there! <laughs> I, got, I gotta go back to work. I gotta do something. Okay, what do you wanna do? I don't know. I, whatever it is, it's gotta be important. I, I mean, not that I need recognition so much. I just need a sense of purpose, of serving the greater good. Okay, then you definitely don't wanna go back to being a lawyer. <laughs> I just wish I knew what it was. Craig, you're making this too hard. Just follow your bliss. Find the thing that makes you happy. All the other stuff will take care of itself. Easy for you to say. I can't think of anything that makes me happy. I can think of one thing. <laughs> I don't want to catch you making a living at it. <laughs> Dharma, are you sleeping? Are you? <laughs> sleeping? <laughs> Never mind, I can wait till morning. <laughs> what? I figured it out. I know how to make myself happy. Then why did you wake me? No, no, no. I was thinking about what you said and all of a sudden it hit me. What? My bliss. Tell me. Golf. <laughs> golf? I'm going to spend the rest of my life playing golf. <laughs> well, whack the little ball with the stick golf. That golf? <laughs> you know, I'm pretty good, and I figure if I practice eight hours a day, by the time I'm 50, I can go on the senior tour. <laughs> 50. You're 32. 18 years, plenty of time. <sighs> Golf. Golf. Okay, well, great. Thank you so much. A lot of wives wouldn't understand this. Oh, well, you can understand that. <laughs> Night. Night. <sighs> okay, you're hosing me, right? <laughs>
she's just gonna let you do it? No, she wasn't thrilled about it at first, but once she understood this was my bliss, she practically pushed me onto the golf course. The only way Jane had ever pushed me onto a golf course is if we were flying over one in a plane. <laughs> hey, Greg, check it out. How cute am I? Very cute. What, what are you doing here? Well, I decided I had a choice. I could stay at home and complain about being a golf widow, or I could come out here and share your passion. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's terrific. Hey, Jane, how would you feel if I quit my job and just played golf every day? Single. <laughs> Caddy, shaft me. Shafting? What do you think? I'd definitely hit it that way. Good call. <laughs> Not sure, Caddy. <laughs> Maple syrup. I believe you had pancakes for breakfast. Yes, that's what I thought. <laughs> Give me your finger. Let me see what you had for breakfast. Just work the camera, please. Four! Tommy, you don't have to yell four on the driving range. Sorry. Never mind! <laughs> All right, Mr. Ball, don't get too comfortable. Here comes Mr. Club. <laughs> Caddy, where'd the ball go? I think it went all the way around the world and came right back here. <laughs> your loyalty and optimism will be reflected in your tip. <laughs> Thank you. All right, you, you just need to keep your head still, honey. Got it. And, and, and keep your left elbow straight. Straight. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, bend your knees like you're sitting on a stool. No, a bar stool. <laughs> Sorry, I was doing milking stool. Yeah, I know. Okay, down. Just take it back nice and easy and shift your weight to your right side. Good. Now, keep your left foot down. Down. Now, now, just all the way back. Now, follow through nice and easy. <laughs> so, next time, you'll want to hold on to the club. Patty, shelf me. I tried. I really did. I played 18 holes. Whack and walk. Whack and walk. God forbid you should jump in the sand and make a castle. Dharma, let me tell you something about golf. It's a conspiracy to turn precious land and water resources into secret meeting places where rich white fat cats can plot to suppress the masses using golf as a cover. On the other hand, I did tell him to find the thing that makes him happy. Good for you. But are you supposed to stand by your partner when they've clearly lost touch with reality? Wait a second. Has somebody been wearing my codpiece? Larry, who would be wearing your codpiece? You never know. Come on, you know, I mean, it's golf. Big golf, dumb golf. No windmills, no clown's mouth, nothing. Well, honey, you do want a life partner you can admire and respect. I'm going to have to shave my legs. The hair is coming out right through the tights. Larry, nobody's going to be close enough to notice. It feels funny. <laughs> Dharma, you know what might cheer you up? Why don't you and Greg come with us to the Renaissance Fair? No, thanks. I've had some bad experiences at the Renaissance Fairs. Really? Yeah, I don't know what happens to the guys who go to those things. Maybe it's the costumes, maybe it's the medieval beer, maybe it's just spending a whole day outside their parents' basements. <laughs> Whatever it is, they're all over you like fridge magnets on a suit of armor. You sure? They're busting an extra hunchbacks for the charity flogging booth. Come on, Abby, help me out. What should I do about Greg? Well, honey, what do you think you should do? Oh, all right. I got it. You don't want to say anything to influence my actions, just like I shouldn't say anything to Greg to influence his actions, right? It's not my place to say. <laughs> Thank you. Where are you going, honey? I'm going to go be a little weasel and tell his mom. <laughs> Golf. Golf. And you are fine with this? It's not for me to say. <laughs> really? Just like I wouldn't say anything to you about any action you might take regarding your son's decision to play golf for the rest of his life. I understand what you're saying. I'm not saying anything. Then it's good we never had this conversation. What the hell just happened? Hey, Dharma! Hey, how 
How's lunch with your parents? Great. Greg, listen. Don't take it personally, okay? No matter how much she yells at you, you have to remember that your mother loves you very much. She didn't yell at me. Yell or scowl or threaten to write you out of the will. <laughs> Greg, it's because she loves you. No, my mother didn't say much of anything. My father did most of the talking. Hmm. Well, whatever he said, Greg, it's because he loves you. He offered me a job. Really? I wonder what the thinking was there. <laughs> I took it. I, I, I mean, I told him you and I needed to talk about it first because we'd have to relocate. Really? That's no problem, honey. I can teach yoga anywhere. Where are we headed? Are you ready? Do I have to get ready? <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you say Oakland? <laughs> Oakland? Who moves to Oakland? Scotland. Montgomery Industries does a little North Sea oil business. In Scotland? And here's the best part. I talked to the guy who's leaving the job, and there's nothing to it. You do a little paperwork, you drive to the coast to see if any of the rigs are on fire, and that's it. The rest of the day, you have to yourself in Scotland, the birthplace of golf. Well, that one came around and bit me on the ass. <laughs> What is that? It smells like you're frying vomit. <laughs> Close. I'm making a great big pot of haggis. What the hell is haggis? It's sheep's heart and liver, minced up and seasoned with just a hint of lung. <laughs> and then neatly stuffed back into its own stomach. Yummy. <laughs> That's not food. That's what happens when circus trains collide. <laughs> Why, it's the national dish of Scotland, lassie. Oh, how about a wee bite? Not if it was served up in the glistening Scottish ass of Sean Connery. <laughs> Fair enough. Can I interest you in some blood pudding? It's another Scottish taste bud tickler made of, are you ready, blood! <laughs> what have you been drinking? Scotch, which was invented by the great Scotsman Angus McBarf when his wife told him what was for dinner. Are you really planning to eat that stuff? No, I'm serving it to my bonnie husband, Gregory. 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 So that he can have a great. Big bowl of his new life. Sly boots, yeah. Then I won't want to move to Scotland. And if that were to come to pass, and how could it not? That would be his life choice. And I cannot interfere with the life choice of another. <laughs> now dance with me, lassie. <laughs> dance like they got haggis in Japan. Excuse me, everybody. Can I have your attention? Can you get the music? Thanks. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank my wife. I was a little nervous about moving so far away. In fact, I almost changed my mind. But she has worked nonstop <laughs> for the past few weeks to get me in touch with my Scottish roots, the smell of Agus. The sweet drone of a bagpipe. Clan Montgomery, I'm coming home. I can't believe our little girl's moving to Scotland. I'm a little surprised myself. We're going to miss you, Pumpkin. Oh, I know, but what a wonderful opportunity. See what happens when you don't interfere with the life choice of another Dharma? The universe just gives you a big thumbs up. <laughs> yep, I can feel it. <laughs> There's a lot of boiled cabbage left over. Would you mind if I took some for the Renaissance Fair? Sure. Okay. It's just what the Renaissance Fair needs, gassy geeks and tights. <laughs> so this is it? You're moving to Scotland? Uh-huh. You're not going to tell them this is stupid? No. Can I tell you this is stupid? <laughs> no. I wonder what Scotland's going to be like. Huh. I'll show you. I have informative video. That's Greg playing golf. Exactly. Now add a couple castles and a lake with a monster. <laughs>
think that I moved my head that time? No. Does he really think he can become a pro? <laughs> yes. That little girl's got a better swing than he does. <laughs> what little girl? Wind it back. How about that time? No. <laughs> wow. Okay, I have an idea, but it's bad and it's wrong. <laughs> How can I help? <laughs> Well, I uh, guess this is the last time we'll be uh, playing together for a while. Yeah. Next time we play, you'll be a big hotshot professional golfer. Right. And I'll be Lord King of the Moon. <laughs> Cute. And each morning, I'll bring the dawn by riding across the sky in my flaming chariot. Okay. <laughs> I get it. You don't think I have a shot at going pro. And from my chariot, I'll bring the rain by peeing over the edge. That's enough. Five bucks a hole, double on carryovers, pretty's pay triple. Lord King of the Moon accepts your wager. Hey, guys. Uh, hi. Where's Jane? Oh, Jane couldn't make it. This is Tiffany. The starter sent her over to join us so we'd be a foursome. This is my husband, Greg, and this is Pete. Nice to meet you, Tiff. It's Tiffany. A tiff is a small argument. So it is. Got it. Isn't she adorable? Yeah, the, the, the kid's gonna slow us down. I know, honey. But just think, one day when she grows up, she'll be watching the senior tour on television, and she'll be able to say, I played with Greg Montgomery. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tiffany, why don't you uh, go ahead and tee off first? Lay into it, Tiffany. Oh, uh, honey, th uh, there's, a, there's a closer tee up front. Well, it's okay. I don't want to slow you down. Okay. Cow. I knocked a snot out of that one. How old are you, honey? Nine and a half. Oh. How old are you, Greg? I'm um, shut up and hit. Here I come. Oh. Well, she didn't slow us down, did she? You can pick yours up. Thanks, Stephanie. I'll put mine. You sure? I already won the hole. I'll put mine. But you get so mad when you. I'll put shot. mine. Stand behind me, honey. <clears throat> now he's even further away on the floor. <laughs> Just pick up your ball. I'll finish. Would you feel better if I call my bed off? I'll finish, Tiff. <laughs> this is gonna take long. I have Girl Scouts. <laughs> you can say fudge if it makes you feel better. <laughs> Well, it was kind of nice of Tiffany to climb that tree and get your putter back for you, huh? Surprised it didn't boomerang back to you. Uh. <laughs> anyway, now I know what to get you for Christmas. Don't bother. I'm never playing golf again. Oh, you mean as a profession, but you'll still play golf on the weekends for fun, right? I don't, I don't really want to talk about it. Could you just give me a little space, please? Sure, you got it. Greg, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm the worst person in the world. I fed you to a nine-year-old phenom. You never had a chance. Please forgive me. What are you talking Greg, about? She's not a regular little girl. She's like a golf Mozart. She is a freak of nature. I found her, and I sicked her on you. Why? Because I didn't want to go to Scotland, which is also my fault. Please don't make me explain. You set all this up? Pack my asbestos pajamas. I'm going straight to hell. You know what, honey? It's okay. No, it's not. I suck! <laughs> No. The whole thing was really stupid. There's no way I was going to be a professional golfer. I know, but it was your 
your dream, Greg, and I crushed it like a bug. <laughs> you did me a favor. But why do I feel so dirty? <laughs> you know what? Forget it. Next weekend, instead of me playing golf, why don't you and I spend some quality time together? I don't deserve it. Yeah, that. you do. <laughs> so sweet, but um, I've seen Kev a lot. What ho, fair maiden? I have acquired coin of the realm with which I shall purchase two flagons of mead. Well, <laughs> and perhaps after, thou wouldst lie with me in thy father's Volkswagen chariot. It's gotta take a lot of mead, buddy. <laughs> thy wish is my command! Don't even start. <laughs>